How do you, how you do, cousins? I just got back from an estate sale, guys, and whew, there were some great deals to be had. Now, I'm a little disappointed in myself because it started yesterday, and usually I go on the first day because that's when the best things can be found, obviously. I didn't make it out there. I only got here today. The good news is things were 20% off, and I found some interesting stuff. Take a look. <laughs> guys just getting into it here this is what i came out with we're going to start with the stuff that is um most uh you know normal i guess i'd say uh i've got a couple of these really awesome let me flip her over here these are etchings and this is madame curie and if you get up real close and you can see all that all that etch work it's real nice it's by a somebody and i have not looked it up yet so i don't know but it's hand that's handwritten uh, signature there so somebody did this and then signed it there's, and these are all holding up on me and then there's another one here of a gentleman uh, i don't know if this is her this is someone else who uh so you know was it an important inventor or I came across something I, I see something in the background there i'm not sure what that is i'll have to look it up and see who this is supposed to be uh but so those uh were 15 dollars a piece and 20 percent off of that right then i got these these also um as you can see oh, dog on you uh these are also etchings that have been uh tinted afterwards all right and they're on I don't know what kind of fabric that is. It's not paper. It's like linen maybe or something. Uh, really cool. Uh, I got two of them here. Unframed. Oh, on silk it says. $20 for the two of them. And uh, so $10 a piece. So, so you know, 20% off of, of, of $20 there. And uh, looking these up on, uh, on eBay. Um, well, here, let me just show you what they're going for right now. This one specifically, I think, sold. Well, as you can see here on eBay, uh, if I put in Paul Geisler, which is the, the individual's name, and then I look up at, uh, you know, highest priced ones, you'll see right here on the second one, that's the picture I've got. So this one picture, uh, I paid $20 for two. This one picture sold for $135 in the last three months. And as I slide down, uh, here's another one, that was 59 that's hand-colored etching there, uh, for $60. And then I don't see the one, uh, 40 again, I do not see the one of the gentleman that I've got. So if I, I could sell the, I could put these both up for, let's say, uh, $135 each, or I could do it as a pair and, uh, see if maybe I could get 250, uh, uh, out of that, um, maybe even 300, somewhere maybe 275, uh, I don't know, but, uh, was really happy to find those. Moving on here, folks. Uh, here's, an, here's a little baggie of some stuff. I'm going to show you what we got. And I'm actually going to save this for a moment because I want to talk about that with the other stuff. But you can see here, I came across some very interesting, uh, very nice pieces of costume jewelry here. They have all of the stones are intact. I mean, look at that sucker. It is beautiful. And the thing about this piece... Uh, well, I'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, and then here's this other one. So you got this one here, nice, uh, all the rhinestones intact, and this these faux pearls here. This one's interesting. It looks like a koi fish, almost. It's got that interesting uh, color there. Uh, real cool. Here's another one uh, with all the rhinestones intact. Beautiful blue and uh, clear rhinestones. And then here's some of this uh, with those sparkly iridescent ones. Uh, real cool. All of these are signed on the back. They got the names of the, of the makers. Um, this particular one, uh, I was looking at these gemstones and thinking, wow, these are, these look like genuine gemstones. These don't look like glass to me. I saw some imperfections in them. Um, and I turned around and inspected it and I don't know, remember where it's at, but yep, I think it's right there. Right there in the middle, if you can see, it says 925. And those of you who know costume jewelry will know what that means. That means that this is made out of sterling silver. And whenever I saw that, it uh, it sort of um, furthered in my mind the possibility that these could be actual semi-precious gemstones. Coming back and comparing these to some other ones that I've got, this is what um, 
what I've decided. Uh, these blue stones are topaz. These purple stones are amethyst. And these yellow stones uh, are citrine. And then uh, you got these kind of these kind of uh, greenish yellow ones over here. Uh, and uh, and that's another one. I'm trying to remember the, the what that's called. But here, let's look at a couple of other stones I have as comparison real quick. All right, I just got back down from uh, level uh, double H uh, three, and uh, you know. Peaches was nice enough. He's kind enough to meet me down there and let me make uh, a quick uh, pull from uh, the vault just for the purposes of this video. And so, I real thanks thanks uh, to Peaches for um, for unlocking that for me. And obviously, you gotta you gotta sign all these out and, and get them back in there. Um, so I went through real quick. I found a couple uh, examples. Here's a nice citrine, but you can see how that's just sort of like a soft uh, lemony color. And this is a uh, it's a 5.8 carat. Very similar to some of these yellows, but these are much deeper, vibrant uh, yellow, almost like a, a bright banana color. And then uh, here's a nice uh, topaz. What we got here? Uh, that is a 10.2 carat. Obviously not the same shape. These are ovals, but you can see that same kind of blue um, in there. Uh, these are these would be considered a, a little bit of a darker hue. Uh, so we're talking uh, what they would call a London blue topaz. Um, whereas uh, this is just like a brighter blue topaz. I was looking through, guys, I pulled a bunch of these out, and uh, you know what? Uh, I just pulled one little batch, and I forgot that our, uh, so uh, the, the one I was trying to remember is Peridot. This like uh, greenish color here in the, in the upper right. So we got the citrine, we got Peridot, we got topaz, and we have amethyst. And I'm looking, I feel like, one of my amethysts is in here, but we've got a bunch of these out on display. Um, we also, uh, I, you know, I was asking about it. I didn't see any right here. Some nice little watermelon tourmaline there, kind of two-tone colors. I mean, we got all these different rubies and sapphires and tanzanites and diamonds and such here. But uh, essentially, uh, what I forgot was that our Peridot collection is uh, out on a museum tour right now. So uh, we don't have that, unfortunately. But what a cool uh, piece. I paid about $16 for this sucker. And given the fact that there's all these gemstones in it and that it's made out of silver that is a very high-end um piece of costume jewelry and uh and so i quite i don't even know what i'm gonna price that at so i'll take a look y'all excuse me uh, i cut myself yesterday doing some gardening work uh but anyways let's let's flash back real quick to the other piece. i got uh real quick before we bounce over i put all these up here so you can kind of see this one uh, in the back underneath of the little uh uh you know, pin portion there, you can barely see it, but it says Roman. Roman, that's a kind of a, a, a nice manufacturer of these costume jewelry pieces. Here's one right here, it says H-A-R. It's an interesting piece. Any kind of unusual piece like this, this fish, this interesting color, always grab, because people like those uh, those unique things. And this is a beautiful, looks like a bouquet of flowers, but it's made out of faux pearls. This one also says, oh, right here, we got Marvella. That's what it says, Marvella. And then this one here, it says Karu, K-A-R-U, and then it says Austria. So we, these are some nicer, higher-end uh, pieces here. Uh, each of these, aside from this one, each of these would go some, anywhere between $20 and $30, $35, sometimes $40 a piece. If sold individually in a lot, maybe slightly less. But with this piece, with all these jewels, if I were to do this in a lot, I'd probably put this up for um, maybe... Two hundred dollars with the best offer, or probably do say, uh, I mean, one hundred and twenty dollars auction, and just see where we go from there. Uh, anyhow, always look at the back. How I knew this was a high end piece, aside from just the colored pieces here, and I knew they were real stones. A couple of giveaways. First of all, um, usually if it's silver, real silver, and this much weight of silver, uh, there's a good chance that the stones are going to be authentic, semi-precious or precious stones. Second of all, you can see how these are set with actual prongs. They aren't glued down into place. They don't have real flimsy, uh, superficial prongs. These are actually set because they're actual uh, pieces of stone. They aren't plastic and they're heavy. You can tell. Uh, another giveaway is in the back. Uh, they aren't, there's no glue. There's no color or any silver backing to, you know, artificial color painted on the back of them as if it's a clear stone looking, you know, you're looking through. And, uh, they've got the open back so that the light can pass through them entirely. You can actually see the color and, uh, you know, they can breathe a little bit there, you know. 
It's an intricate uh, designed piece. There's lots of different stones in it. Uh, so given the fact that it's a, it's a semi-precious, precious metal, uh, the stones are set correctly. They're, they're given space. You can see the open, the, the open back set up there. Uh, all of that sort of indicates that this is a higher end, nicer piece and that these are more than just uh, your typical pieces of glass. Also, I want to talk for just a second about how you date these sometimes, and that's by the way that these catches and these little pins are constructed. You can see that this one right here has two little prongs and that sort of round barrel. And you would, this one's the same way. You can see how these got those two little, yeah, perfect. You can see that right there. If I swiveled this around, it would open up and this thing could pop out. There are some websites, guys, that you can find that will show you. Look, it's a round safety catch in the closed position and the open position. This was a modern safety catch circa the 1930s. Um, and it will show you all kinds of different examples of these. In this case, this is brooches and, uh, and pins. And it's showing you how the, these things clasp. It's showing you drawings. It's giving you the time periods. And that can help you a lot when you're trying to figure out exactly uh, you know, where a thing maybe was made and maybe when it was made. So it's easy to find that stuff. You just look up um, dating clasps, and it's one of the first ones that pops up on. All right, guys, moving on here. Two or three more pieces of interesting stuff here. See this little thing? This is made of, uh, I mean, it looks like it's made out of brass or uh, copper, something like that. It's heavy. Um, and on the back... It says the Georgetown Inn, 1310 Wisconsin Avenue, Northwest, Washington, D.C. It says drop in any mailbox. We guarantee the postage. Um, and uh, so what this is essentially, folks, is a key fob uh, or, you know, a key, you know, holder. It would, would have had a key on this uh, and guests would use this to get in uh, to their, to their uh, door. And then if they accidentally took it with them, uh, they could drop it in the mail, and it would go back to this address, and they, they would pay your postage, it says. <laughs> I don't know how old this is, but I know that old keys and old key fobs and things like this um, can go for a decent amount of money. And it's made, it looks fairly old. I don't know if it's made to look old, if this was just a souvenir, if this was an authentic key fob. But I'm going to go look it up right now and see. I'm also going to check out that address and see is the Georgetown Inn still around there? What can I find out about this place? So let's pause again and go inspect and look up this item. Well, folks, so far so good. The Georgetown Inn, 1310 Wisconsin Avenue, 1310 Wisconsin Avenue, Washington, D.C. It's a real place, folks, and that's what it looks like. All right. A quick search of Georgetown in key is showing up at uh, we got a room key and the fob for thirty seven dollars and forty three cents. Here's one that went for you know basically a little bit under fifteen bucks, and then here's one that went for forty nine dollars. Now the key themselves, I don't know how much of that was because it had the key, and is that even the original key? How would a person know? Um, I don't. I don't even know. Uh, there is room three sixteen. This channel lock on it. Okay, yep, channel lock, which is a lock company. Uh, they made locks, they made uh, tools, hand tools as well. So there it is, guys. Uh, so I paid six dollars for mine. It doesn't have a key, but maybe I can get 15 to 20 dollars. Here's another piece, guys, that I bought, and it is a bracelet, as you can see, right like this. And uh, if I pull it over, you can see the this filigree kind of work here on this side. Real, really cool and intricate. You got these little hinges, just like a, a hinge would be on, uh, say, a watch a band as it attaches to the to the body of the watch or the face of the watch. And what you have here are several individual figures. Some of them are wearing beards. Some of them are not. Some are men. Some are women. And what you have here are little figures that have been hand carved out of what I believe is probably bone uh, or some sort of horn. Um, and they have are held in place by these little metal, you can see right here by my, my, my nail here, little clasps. Let me see if I can pull it up a little closer. Um, 
right around, you can see right there by his foot, and over here right around his waist, these little metal um, uh, pieces are holding those little, almost like little medallions in place. Then they have been hand painted, and the metal itself on the edge has been painted with some sort of a green enamel paint as well. It's got a really cool clasp here as well, so if I flip this sucker around, and I turn it over like this, you can see how this clasp would go in like that. And it would go in place like that. But it is a gorgeous antique piece. I'm not exactly sure how old, but kind of on the topic, uh, earlier on the topic of clasps and things, this particular clasp is, I can, I'll have to look it up and see if I can find it, but you know, there was a time when this was invented, it was patented, and so obviously I'll know that this piece of jewelry was made at that time or later, uh, roughly around probably within 10 or 20 years of it being invented because that would have been one of the popular ways of, of uh, putting these things together at that time period but a gorgeous cool piece i've never seen one before i'm gonna look it up and see if i can find one like quick search guys and i found one that is similar you can see that it's got those figures as well um it's mine's not identical to that but it's very they're saying that this is silver filigree maybe mine was silver plated but i don't believe it was solid silver that one sold for 150 dollars um i bought mine for 35 uh, and I'm just looking around here to see, let me go back um, to the, the searches here. I had searched uh, Chinese, and you can see here uh, is one of the ones that I, silver filigree, silver filigree, uh, is one of the ones that I had, had clicked on that was similar. Um, and that's, that's one right there too. Here's one, again, it's very, very close. Uh, and this one says eBay, so let's see. Uh, Yep, so that one's on eBay. Um, so there's a few of these out there, guys, it looks like. Here's another one that's similar. An auction site. Um, so, yeah. Won't be too hard. I'll do some comps out there uh, and see. Um, my guess is I'll throw it up for maybe $100 at an auction and see what happens. Um, if I can find one, here's one um, as well. And uh, let's, let's see what they're... What they're saying about theirs here. Oh, it's the same one as we saw earlier. 150. Okay, well, thanks for wasting my time. Uh, anyways, looks good. I, I think it's a cool piece either way. And, uh, you know, try to get that uh, up in the eBay store soon. Cousins, thanks for hanging around with us today. Uh, check out also about uh, later today or tomorrow, we're going to be dropping the other video of the stuff we found at this estate sale. Guys, look for local estate sales. You can find great stuff there. Good luck, honey. Rusty, rusty, rusty hair too, rusty.